Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Matmi. Yet another revision video for my revision series of the thorax. So I welcome you back to my channel. Please, before we start the video, do not forget to subscribe and turn your post notifications on. And also follow me on Instagram to contact me directly. So let's go ahead and begin the thorax. The thorax is basically the smallest region of all the regions. And it has nine chapters. Let's just get right into it. The introductory chapter of thorax is a very important chapter unlike we saw in the upper limb and the lower limb. Give this a read and fast forward to this paragraph over here which is so important because it basically tells the formation of the rib cage or the basic bone structure of the thorax. It talks about how there are ribs and how the ribs are classified. So the ribs are classified as true or false ribs and then there are floating ribs. So you should know this classification very well. So for that, you have to thoroughly read this. So this clinical basically tells about the weak point of a rib. You should know that, which is the angle. The shape, basically you should know the shape of the thorax. These are the different shapes of the thorax. Then the superior aperture or inlet of the thorax is a very important part of your syllabus. It may give you a whole UQ based on describing the boundaries and contents of the inlet of the thorax. So this is the definition you should know the definition and you should know the boundaries and apart from that you should also know a briefly about the Simpson's fascia or the suprapleural membrane the structures passing through the inlet of the thorax very important you should know the viscera the vessels and all of these structures that pass through the inlet of the thorax now the clinicals are super important because the cervical rib is something you should know very well and what it causes it causes the wasting of the muscles the paresthesias because it puts pressure on the brachial plexus and whatever lies at the inlet. And then there is the coarctation of aorta. This clinical right here with the diagram is very important to understand. So go ahead and watch one of my videos which I made over this. And there you can understand this concept in seconds. And thoracic inlet syndrome, go ahead and look at KLM for this topic. Then we'll talk about the inferior aperture. So for studying the inferior aperture or the outlet of the thorax, which is basically occupied by the diaphragm, you'll have to go to the abdominal pelvis BD, where you'll find a whole chapter dedicated to the diaphragm and you should know the origin, insertion, nerve supply, blood supply of the diaphragm and you should know the large and small openings of the diaphragm very well. And apart from that, you should know the level of the openings, which is this table right here. You can study this very well because this is easy mark. Apart from that, in diaphragm, you should also know about the clinicals, about hernia. So you should know about all the various kinds of hernia, the congenital and acquired. And you should know very well of the types of the hiatal hernia. Moving on to the next chapter, bones and joints of the thorax. Now, I will uh, definitely mark this chapter, uh, which I did not do for the other regions. Because this chapter is actually a lot more important than you think. You're probably of the view that this chapter can be done for the viva. Well, that's not the case. You should know this chapter for your theory because it's going to talk about the bones, which are the ribs. And they will tell you the features of the typical and the atypical ribs, which is so important. It can actually be a UQ that differentiate between typical and atypical rib. There can be MCQs asking which number of the ribs are atypical. So you should know that. Here is the feature of the atypical rib, which is first rib. So for this, you should know this diagram very well. This is 100% very important for your theory. They may ask you to draw it. And you should know relations of the neck of the rib. And then you should know the other atypical rib, which is the second rib, features of it, the 10th rib, the 11th and 12th rib, which are also the floating ribs. You can skip the attachments and relations now. Next uh, is the sternum. In the sternum, you need to know about this clinical right here, the bone marrow examination. Uh, the manubrial sternal puncture is done in that case. Maybe it could be an MCQ. And then funnel chest, pigeon chest are important clinicals. Moving on, the vertebral column, similar to the ribs, they also have a typical and atypical vertebra. You should be able to know the differentiation between the two and you should know which number vertebra are the atypical vertebra. And apart from that, you should know what are the primary curves, the secondary curves, because these may come in your MCQs. Also, this lateral curve. Go ahead and give these a read so you know the features of the typical vertebra. And then go ahead and check this diagram out. It's basically telling you about the atypical vertebras and why they're atypical and different from the other, the typical vertebra. 
Moving on, the disc prolapse is an important clinical. Now, joints of thorax, all you need to do for your theory is learn the type of which each joint is. So, many groups are the secondary cartilaginous and uh, the costovertebral is plain synovial, the costotransverse is synovial, the costochondral is primary cartilaginous. Here, one more thing that can come in the MCQ is they may ask you which joint is permitting zero movements or which is the joint that has no movements that are possible in it. You're going to mention the primary cartilaginous joint. The type primary cartilaginous joint permits absolutely no movements while the secondary cartilaginous joint, it does permit slight movements. So this is a confusion mostly in MCQs, which I just solved right now. Moving on here too, it's telling about the different joints of your vertebra and you should know the types of each joint. You should know the functions of the intervertebral discs. And then moving on to respiratory movements, go ahead and memorize this entire principle of movement. That's all you'll need to know. You can go ahead and read the summary, but this is to be memorized. Which muscles are used in quiet inspiration and which muscles are used in deep inspiration. And then the forced inspiration and then the expiration. You should know all the muscles. Here the clinicals are very important. Which is the most comfortable spot when a person is experiencing dyspnea? So the patient should be sitting up, leaning forwards and fixing the arms. This is the most comfortable point where your diaphragm is the lowest. Also, you should know the types of respiration in young children, which is abdominal. Women of advanced age and pregnancy they have thoracic breathing. The height of the diaphragm, you should know where, when the diaphragm is the highest. It is highest on lying supine and it is the lowest while in sitting and when it is midway position. Now let's move on to the next chapter, which is the wall of the thorax. Go ahead and just give this a read. Thoracic wall proper, you should uh, have an idea of these muscles. Go ahead and learn the origin insertion. After learning so many muscles of upper and lower limb, I'm sure you won't face that much difficulty doing these. You should know the direction of fibers of each muscle. In the external intercostal muscle, they are going downward, forwards, and medially, and to the front. While in internal intercostal is completely opposite situation. So that's to be known. And nerve supply and the whole origin course and termination of your intercostal nerve is very important. Its branches can be red, that's enough. You can give a read to these branches of the intercostal nerve. And then what is the irritation of intercostal nerve, usually root pain? The superior vena cable obstruction is an important clinical, which you can do in the later chapter, which is uh, the superior vena cava chapter. And then the intercostal arteries. Here, the concept gets a little confusing if you do not pay attention to the details. You should know the arteries. They are 11 in number. Where do the first and second arise from? Where do the rest arise from? The first and second is this and the rest are from this. So that's an important thing to know. You can just go ahead and read the relations. That's enough. And then the termination, basically read the termination. Now you should know the anterior intercostal arteries. Where do they originate from? You can see the upper six, they arise from the internal thoracic and the seven to ninth, they arise as branch of musculophrenic artery. So this is very important to know because this can confuse you later. So go ahead and study that thoroughly that where do the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, basically all the intercostal arteries arise from. Then come the intercostal veins. Similarly, you should know exactly where the veins drain into, which vein do they drain into. So this whole diagram should be learned very well. This diagram is super easy. It's a shortcut. You don't even need to read this or you don't even need to read this table once you've studied this diagram because it basically talks about which vein drains into which. And remember one thing, right and left are both different. So right side, fifth vein drains into the azygous vein, while left side, fifth intercostal vein drains into the accessory hemiazygous vein. So these little things should be known. Internal thoracic artery is super important and you should know its origin, course and termination. Branches are super important. I even made a mnemonic for this. Camps. So you can go ahead and study that. Azygous vein, super important. The azygous venous channel is, this diagram will help you to learn what the azygous vein course is. So go ahead and origin course termination of the azygous vein, the hemiazygous accessory hemiazygous. Go ahead and read all of that and memorize this diagram which will cause ease in studying these. The thoracic sympathetic trunk, another very difficult complicated concept but go ahead and watch one of my videos where I explained it so you should know what are the various branches of the 
thoracic sympathetic change you should know about the greater lesser end Le least planktonic nerves these are very important what are the lateral branches and what are the medial branches supplying so lateral are supplying the limbs and body wall the medial branches are for the vista cardiac pain now this is an important clinical which may be asked as a uq why does cardiac pain pain referred to your neck jaw and your left arm this is the answer all right moving on thoracic cavity and the pleura go ahead and read the introduction you can just read this so here you should know very well the surface marking of the lung or the visceral pleura because the visceral pleura is basically the lung all right so go ahead you should know where the apex is you should know these tiny details that it is lying 2.5 cm above the medial one third of the clavicle all of this is super important there's a surface marking or basically marking the visceral pleura or the lung same thing and you should know these points apart from that you should know the parietal pleura even better than the lung because this is so important the costal diaphragmatic mediastinal and what are the markings of these various pleura so all of this is written the costal pleura is lying where does it lie all of this is written over here here you should pay close attention to the costal mediastinal and costal diaphragmatic lines make sure you know what these are the anterior margin of the parietal pleura is the costal mediastinal line while the inferior margin is the costal diaphragmatic line most of the students do not know this concept but now it's cleared so make sure you know the markings of these lines all right then we go ahead and do the pulmonary ligament this should be known the recesses of the pleura is very important what is the costal mediastinal recess what is the costal diaphragmatic recess because a note can come over this and they will ask you this point, 8 to 10th rib along the mid axillary line. Now that's an important point for marking. So what is the nerve supply of the pleura? Clearly you should know this very well. Always remember the parietal pleura will always be supplied by somatic nerves, the nerves that basically carry sense of pain and sensation, while the visceral pleuras will most probably be supplied by autonomic nerves. Now autonomic nerves have no other function but the sympathetic and parasympathetic function. So wherever there is supply of autonomic nerves, you will never be able to feel pain or sensation over there. These nerves only perform involuntary functions. What are the involuntary functions you should know? Sympathetic dilates the bronchi while the parasympathetic narrows it. And this parasympathetic is also secretory. What is the blood supply and lymphatic drainage? Go over that. And here comes a very important clinical. How do you do the paracentesis thoracic or the aspiration of the fluid from pleural cavity? You do it at the eighth intercostal space in the mid axillary line. Now that's something you should know well. The needle is passed in the lower part of the space. Why? That's also a question. To avoid injury to the VAN over there. Apart from that, you should know the definition of pleurisy, pneumothorax, hemothorax, hydrothorax, and pyema. The definitions should be known. You should know the nerve supply of diaphragmatic pleura. So you can see why pain is referred. So this is an important paragraph. Why does pain on right shoulder occur? Why does pain on left shoulder occur? Due to the referred pain. This is important clinical. So next chapter is the lungs. Go ahead and read the introduction. They just basically give this a read. Reading is enough of this part. You should gain an understanding of the lungs. You should gain an understanding. The fissures of the lung, you, right lung is divided into three lobes, while the left lung is only divided into two lobes. And then there's a tongue-shaped projection, lingula. All of this is just giving you a brief outline of what the lungs look like. The most important part of memorization starts here. You should know these two diagrams. Firstly, what is the root of the lung? And what are the contents of the root of the lung? And there is going to be a difference in the contents on the right and the left side. So that's this table will tell you, give you an idea of that. And then what is the arrangement of the structure in the root? This is also important. And now this is the first time I'm going to tell you that relations are important. The relations should be known of the root. Now, if this is getting too difficult for you, you can go ahead and just look at these diagrams. I've even made mnemonics on how to learn this. Go ahead and check that video out and you will learn the relations in no time. Next, we have the arterial supply of the lung. Yeah, you should know that very well. And the venous drainage. That's enough. Next, you should know lymphatic drainage. Now, this is something I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and study from KLM. Do not read it from here. KLM has the perfect lymphatic drainage note written. So you should go ahead and memorize that. The bronchial T, this is basically telling you the structure of what happens inside a lung. So first the trachea goes, it divides into the principal bronchi, which further divide all of that. And then they are divided into further secondary lobar, then segmental bronchi, then terminal bronchioles. So you should know that classification, how they get thinner as they progress into the lung. 
and eventually they become these you should know the names of these and what are the bronchopulmonary segments super important you should know the definition and i'm not going to ask you to learn some vague definition this is these six points are the exact definition of the bronchopulmonary segment not one point should be missing and not any point should be added to this you should learn this as it is so if they're asking the definition of bronchopulmonary segment just writing a point or two is not enough you have to write all six what, are, what is the relation to pulmonary artery? What is the relation to pulmonary vein? This is very important. Just two lines to read and you'll know. You do not need to know the development of respiratory system. And these diagrams are super important. Here's another important point. You can see that in the intersegmental plane, a venule is lying. So this may be an MCQ that what lies in the intersegment, in the segments between the various pulmonary units. So you'll say the segmental venule. All of this can be skipped and moving on right here. You talk about the clinicals here. This is important. What is the carina? What is paradoxical respiration? What is flail chest? Which one is the most dependent bronchopulmonary segment in supine position? You should know that. And foreign bodies are likely to be lodged where? In the supine position, it is superior segment of the lower lobe. That is to be known. Another important clinical right bronchus is at an angle of 25 while left is 45. So foreign bodies will lodge into the right bronchus. Apart from this, I'd like you to go to this part of the chapter. Here there's an important segment. Here it's the posterior basal segment. So they've already talked about supine position. The superior segment of lower lobe is most dependent or where the foreign body will go. But in case where the, there is a patient that is not supine, in that case it goes into the posterior basal segment of the lower lobe of the right bronchus obviously because it's more in line so that was all for the lungs then comes the mediastinum now this chapter simply this diagram if you can just learn this diagram this chapter is quite a piece of cake so they basically are going to talk about the different mediastinums there is a superior and an inferior mediastinum okay so what are the boundaries of the entire mediastinum this basically mediastinum is a partition between your two lungs Okay, or partition of the entire thorax. So superior mediastinum, you should know the boundaries. So this is where it'll be easy for you in this diagram is that whenever you, they'll talk about the boundaries, you can just look at the diagram and tell the boundaries. Like you can literally uh, memorize this diagram. And what are the contents? Now, this is something worth memorizing. You should know superior mediastinum consists of these contents. It's quite obvious. Obviously, trachea and esophagus pass through the superior part of the thorax so obviously that will be a content so you should remember these very well inferior mediastinum is further divided into an anterior middle and a posterior mediastinum you should know the boundaries and contents of each then comes the clinical anatomy here the mediastinal syndrome is very important you should know this very well and all the symptoms that it'll produce now comes a very crucial topic i'm sure most of you really get stressed looking at this topic the heart well, let me tell you, if you know it very well, you're definitely going to have a distinction in anatomy. Reading the introduction, the fibrous pericardium, very well you should know where the apex lies, what does the base do. All these points are actually quite important. The serous pericardium, similarly learn a few lines of this and you should know about the pericardial cavity and what fluid lies in it. It's a serous fluid. What are the sinuses of the pericardium, the oblique? Pericardial sinus and the transverse sinus should be known very well. What is the transverse sinus? Learn a little about it. This entire paragraph is actually important. You should know what it is bounded by. Okay. And similarly, the oblique sinus also. Similarly, you should also say you should know that what it is bounded by. What are the contents of the pericardium? You can go ahead and learn that. Blood supply, nerve supply. Nerve supply is always the most important in case of thorax. What is pericardial effusion and where do you aspirate a pericardial infusion? So it's on the left fifth or sixth intercostal space. So that's important. Next, we talk about the heart itself, the organ. Pericardium was just a covering. The heart begins here. Over here, I just want you to go ahead and watch my OSPI video on heart. You will get a brief idea of the groove, sulci, all of this which is written. It looks overwhelming, all of this. Uh, information over here you can just go ahead and look at the ospi of the heart and then go ahead and read this it will be super easy you will understand exactly what is happening you do not need to memorize this it's mostly important for ospi but overall you should have an idea of what is the structure of the heart 
Here, dextrocardia situs inversus is an important clinical. And where is the apex beat located? You should know. So all of this, the, you should know the borders of the heart. You should know what lies in each border. So here you can see the upper border is basically formed by the two atria and the left atrium. That's important. So these are very important. Right border basically is formed by the right atrium. The inferior border is formed by whatever. And then the left border is formed by whatever you see. Surfaces, similarly, you should know how many surfaces are there and which surface is formed by what. What is the crux of the heart? Then comes your right atrium. So right atrium is basically, I know it looks like a lot, but most likely they will ask you to write a note on the right atrium. So you can go ahead and read this and you should mention some important parts in your paragraph, like the sulcus terminalis, the sinoatrial node, where it is located, what is the intra mus internal muscular ridge, crista terminalis, where is the SA node located? All of these little things you should just write in the paragraph and you should be able to write a note on the right atrium and you should know the internal features very well so you can see the sinus venerum right these three points one two and three you're going to talk about the rough anterior part and then some about the interatrial septum the fossa ovalis and the annulus ovalis what are these the right ventricle now here i want you to go ahead and form your own paragraph after reading this because there's a lot Go ahead and only highlight the important parts and make a paragraph out of it because they might actually ask you in the UQs to write a note on the right ventricle. So you should be mentioning all of these parts, the inflowing, the outflowing part, and then the internal features of it, the pulmonary orifice, the atrioventricular orifice, what are the trabeculae carni, very important, what is the moderator band, now this comes in your MCQs, and interventricular septum, what are the parts of the interventricular septum, you should be able to write all of that in your paragraph. So most likely they will ask you either about the right ventricle features or the right atrium features. So you can just go ahead and read the left ventricle, that's enough. And then the left ventricle, almost similar structure as the right, but a little different. Just go ahead and read these clinicals, that's enough. And then we'll talk about the structure of heart, which is mostly the valves. You know a little bit about it and then go ahead and read this. You should know the chorda tenne. You should know these important uh, keywords at least, like which is the tricuspid valve and which is the bicuspid valve, how many cusps are in each, what are the semilunar valves, all of this should be known. The fibrous skeleton of the heart is, you have to make a whole paragraph on this because they might ask you to write a note on the fibrous skeleton of the heart. So you can go ahead and read that and make a note by yourself. And you should know the trigonum fibrosum dextrum. You should know about the trigonum fibrosum sinistrum and the tendon of impandibulum. You should know exactly what they are. What is the musculature of the heart? Go ahead and read that. What is the conducting system? This is important because you should know where the SA node is located. It is located atrial cable junction, the upper part of sulcus terminalis. Very important information. Where is the AV node located? Where is the AV bundle branch or bundle of his located? And where is the right AV bundle branch going? Where is the left branch going? Where are the Purkinje fibers located? All of these are actually important. You should know their locations for anatomy at least. Now here comes the tricky part. The artery supplying the heart is something I don't want you to study from BD. This is the moment you'll close your BD for a while and open your KLM because the coronary arteries are to be studied from KLM only. Over here, there is some misguiding information. So KLM is the standard book to know about the artery supplying the heart and that's how your paper will be made. So go ahead and read the right coronary and the left coronary artery along with, you should know about the cardiac dominance and the cardiac tamponade and the pericardial rub. These are important clinicals. Here again, you're not going to read cardiac dominance from here. This is also an important question. You are gonna go ahead and look at KLM for that. All of this is unnecessary. Veins of the heart, once again, KLM. You are not, you don't even need to literally read this. You just need to go to KLM and study it. And then come the important part, which you can actually study from here, is the nerve supply of the heart. Go ahead and look at this diagram first, and then you will know very well what the nerve supply of the heart is. This is only going to confuse you. Just look at the diagram and that's enough. Then see, they're talking about the cardiac pain again. You do not need to know the circulation. You do not need to know any of that. You can go ahead and finally move to the next chapter. Give a read to the introduction now you should know very well where the superior superior vena cava is 
uh, originating from its course you need to know a little bit about its relations just for your own understanding tributaries and most importantly you should know where the parts of the vena cava are located so you can see here it is formed by the union of the right and left brachiocephalic vein behind the lower border of the first right costal cartilage now that's an important information and the each brachiocephalic vein is formed behind the sternoclavicular joint and it is formed by these two then the course they're going to talk about the it begins behind lower border of sternal end of the right costal cartilage and then pierces pericardium opposite to the second right costal cartilage and terminates on the upper part of the right atrium behind third costal cartilage these landmarks are actually very important here they're going to talk about the similar clinical obstruction of the superior vena cava diagrams you saw in the wall of thorax chapter so go ahead and study from there aorta again you should know the origin course and termination basically the ascending aorta you should know about the aortic knuckle very well how will you identify it it will show up as a mediastinal shadow a projection beyond the left margin of the mediastinal shadow you should know about the coarctation of aorta, which we've already done before. And then these structures, go ahead and just read that. Arch of aorta, once again, just give it a read and memorize the origin course termination with branches. And then the descending thoracic aorta, similarly. You can, like, you can give a good read to the relations, but not skip them. Go ahead and read this paragraph because this is most likely going to be seen in your MCQ. So do not skip this paragraph at all. Especially this part where it says the ligamentum arteriosum, which is the remain of ductus arteriosus. So next chapter is the trachea esophagus thoracic duct. You should be able to write a note on trachea. What is its length? Most important part is the... You can talk about the C-shaped ring, but the most important part is knowing the arterial supply, venous drainage, lymphatic, and nerve supply of the trachea. Here, you can skip this. Next is esophagus. You should be able to write a note on it. And what's most important about esophagus is its constrictions. You should memorize these very well in inches, in centimeters, I'd recommend, and where they're crossed and how many are there. That is very important. So you can just give this a read. The relations are just a read. But the arterial supply, once again, and the venous supply, the lymphatic drainage, and the nerve supply is very important. You can skip all of that. What is the portal hypertension and what are esophageal varices? Very important clinical. Why do you vomit out blood? What happens exactly? And what do you see when there's a barium swallow? You see worm-like shadows. This is important clinical. And what is the point of the constrictions? It's basically important in esophagoscopy. What is the aclasia cardia? So that's enough for the esophagus. Then you'll do the thoracic duct. You'll know its course. And you can just go ahead and only read the relations. Do not memorize them. Tributaries are important. This diagram is super duper duper important. Go ahead and memorize this. Then you won't even probably need to read it. You just need to know this diagram. You should know the course of the thoracic duct very, very well. And this transition is very important. At the fifth thoracic vertebra, it crosses from right to left side. So first it was lying to the right of the esophagus, then it went to the left of esophagus at the fifth thoracic vertebra. That is an important part. And where does it drain? It drains to the left side. So what happens to the right side? You should know all of that. So with this comes the end of the thorax. I really hope this revision was fruitful for you. And once again, I wish you good luck for your prof examination. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. and. Thank you so much for watching.